Oh, well, happy Wednesday, folks. Uh, we have an awesome uh, kind of a new show. I think we're going to do a, a bunch of these uh, if you guys are uh, willing and able and uh, still interested. Uh, called Getting Creative. Uh, basically, we're going to have a bunch of our developers and game masters on to talk about fun ways and exciting ways to make um, all of the Savage Worlds mechanics interesting and fun at your game table. So I think today we're going to start with Getting Creative with Foot Chases. And uh, so I'll turn it over to Daryl and Donald. I was going to give a link to the Kickstarter, um, but right now apparently Kickstarter is down. It's giving me an <laughs> apologize, something's gone wrong link. So I'll wait till Kickstarter's back up. Um, but we are running a 20th anniversary Sway Kickstarter with um, players' books, only $20, five different variant covers. We've got a really cool stretch goal that we're going to reveal tomorrow, um, what it actually is. And um, so all the good stuff, I think it's over $100,000, $110,000 already. So thank you, everybody who's backed already. I give you the actual numbers, but Kickstarter won't let me see them. So hopefully, hopefully Kickstarter will get their stuff together and we will promo that um, sometime during the stream. But uh, other than that, guys, if you guys have your questions for our team, we're going to go over foot chases today, and I'll let Daryl and, and Donald lead the way. But uh, feel free to ask your questions in the comments, and I'll throw hey, them there. And hopefully, yeah. be a, a victim in the foot chase. So take it away. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I'm going to murder some people. <laughs> now, and, and what what brought this about? Like the whole idea of of this came about. We were talking about you know we've got the fifth printing of the book coming out, and people, there are some sections that people still aren't comfortable with. And the, the, what we started kicking around is, is this something that we need to change in the book or is it something that we need to develop elsewhere? Well, no, the, the text in the book covers, uh-oh. I You just cut out for a moment. Oh dear, okay. Well, if I disappear, good luck, Don. <laughs> the, 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 the text in the book covers all of these dozens of situations that people are going to need. So it kind of still has to be there. But what we can do to enhance that outside of the book is some documents and some explanations and some situational, like, all right, really, this is super easy, y'all. You know, let, let's, let's, atta let's tackle it. So before we even get that creative with it, we'll get to basics, right? It's like chases. Let's just start with a foot chase, do one, get comfortable with it. And along the way, maybe show off a few things, why we built them the way we did and how the numbers work. Sound good? Good to me. I All right. If I'm still, if I say even... no, we're not going to stop the stream. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just making sure that like you can still hear me. So I'm yes. worried now. All right, good, good. So, chases are one of the subsystems that shows up in the the adventurers toolkit. And when you want to use one, the first question is, should it be a chase? Like, is this the tool that I need to be using for this situation? And when people go straight in like, oh, I want to run a chase, that's usually doing it backwards, right? It's no, I have a situation that calls for a chase. Now I need to invoke these rules, not I should look to do a chase, if that makes sense. Yes, because uh, also one of the things that you want to keep in mind is if you're going to use the chase rules, there's a chance that whoever is running away does not get away. <laughs> yeah, if you, right. <laughs> if you want it to be that, that the players are most likely going to catch up. At that point, you're probably talking about something more like a dramatic task. Or a quick or encounter. Just rolls, or or just encounter. a roll. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, like, this is the part where I say when this happens, like, take a moment, pause, look at the clock, and determine, do I want this encounter to have dramatic weight, or do I just need to move on to the next thing, right? Like, if you need to move on, quick encounter, die roll go right if this is like the dramatic moment if this is important or if someone's life is on the line probably worth busting out the chase rules and the the um the, the questions become like all right what happens if i fail am i gonna die am i getting captured do we start a combat if you're starting a combat pff, one roll don't bother doing a chase you know that's going to be the weight of the situation. And this is one of the things that the Savage Worlds toolkits like let you do is most games have essentially one style of encounter and that's got to carry all that dramatic weight. 
So you're looking for ways to turn things into a fight that will be satisfying for your conclusion. Whereas in Savage Worlds, it doesn't have to work like that. It's like, well, no, we're pretty much running for our lives. And if we get away, that's a big win. All right, let's not use a regular encounter for that. Let's try the chase. So that also makes it hard to demo because it's situation based. But by just like grabbing a situation out of the air, we'll make one up and we'll build it as we go, much like you'd have to do in the, the game itself, because it's going to come up because of something unexpected usually. And the, the, the scenario I had in my mind is we're in Deadlands, uh, the posse's out looking for someone who disappeared and they're, you know, like out in the fields at night, uh, as you do. And one of them stumbles onto you know, the, the person that, you know, the, the things that made this person disappear are werewolves and not any silver. And this is where a regular game would screech to a halt, right? Because you can't actually damage werewolves without silver. Like, there is no fight here. Like, you can shake them. That's it. So it's like, well, no, you're running for your life at this point. You have to get away. Um, so that's going to be our situation. Bumped into werewolves, ain't got no silver. We've got to go and we'll build out this chase piece by piece as you would do it like at the table. Right. So for one thing, I do want to make this a chase because you're going to be torn apart in either dead or dead and revived as a werewolf. So it's a big deal. Like you, you want to let people be able to multi-stage this, use bennies and things like that. Whereas if it's just a single roll, it's like, oh, crit failed. <laughs> You're dead. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, Don's, you know, made a, a very nice little roll 20 thing here. And I think yeah. that's pretty much all we need. Just some tokens and some cards. Yeah. I wanted to do it with as, as as little as we could get away with because if you're at the table in real life, yeah. you've got your decks of cards, you've got your pawns, and that's it. Right. Yeah. So I'm not going to do any of the crazy stuff that we can get going in Roll20 with the macros and whatnot. That's perfect. It's just yeah. a, a blank page. So and no, of... I, I, I'm just going to get this out of the way because I figure somebody at some point will be like, oh, what's the title of that game? Does that mean you're doing a Deadwood adventure? No. <laughs> this is the Roll20 I made so I could play test my deadlands or my deadwood adventure for the deadwood uh, con we did and i'm just reusing that so there is no nice. upcoming dark lights at deadwood adventure it was just a play test for the people Ooh. who got to play at deadwood dark lights of deadwood's a great name though you know it was a, it was a, people had when, fun when's it coming out don come on <laughs> <laughs> so we, we need a werewolf and i guess you guys need characters just pick one below doesn't matter who they're gonna be. Who are you, Don? Uh, I guess let me let me. I was just gonna. You don't need to uh, name them. Just a token's fine. Yeah. Well, it's just I already got the the, the names under it. <laughs> I I was gonna do all fictional characters, but if we're gonna if we're gonna do us, I already made the the Harold guy Chris and. <laughs> oh, there you I'll, go. Perfect. I'll play the medicine woman. All right. Perfect. 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 Right. Yeah. So, um, and in this situation, right. We we're trying, we're going to get to some of those, keep those questions. Yeah. Like ask those questions because we definitely want to get into some of the situational stuff. And this is something we're going to explore in some documents. Right. So, but some of this like wet rocks uphill, like uphill, that's actually kind of built into the base system. You don't have to do anything special for it unless you want to really exaggerate it. And we'll look at means of exaggerating anyway. So, We'll just use the werewolf token for the wolves. We're, you know, there's going to be five of them, so you guys are screwed, right? <laughs> and then you guys, and you can kill those other two tokens because, you know, no one else. They all got killed already. Wah, wah. Oh, oh, Red and Gabe are dying off the bat. Wow. This is, <laughs> yeah. This is keeping the savage in savage worlds. Right. I mean, that should be our thing, though, right? Um. So. The first thing you do in a chase is you're going to set up the cards which represent the, the chase itself. And we're going to deal nine. The book says, hey, nine's a good place to start. And that's oh! exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Starting off good. 
Yeah, is it though? Because that's where the werewolves are going to start. We'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> and so people like because there's not a a standard like it's X many cards. You know, it's like hey, we suggest nine. Why nine? Right? And there's actually a reason for this. And part of it is we're going to use the first three cards to set up the people, and then. After that, you've got the, the rest of the track that you're going to be running, right? Um, and the maximum you can go is two cards in one movement. So if you're starting in those first three, that means this chase is going to last at least three rounds when we get off to the end of the track. There's also a lot of options here, depending on what you want to do. One of them is you can end the chase when people get off the end of the track. That's what I want to do. And we'll say, like, that's a river. If you can get to that river, you can jump in and get washed away, and werewolves want no part of that, right? Um, if you don't want an end point like that, then you're going to have to, like, escape. You're going to have to flee. And that will take a lot of cards, and it'll be really hard, and werewolves will kill you. So pro tip, without a specific end condition, it is very difficult to get away in a chase. Doable. And there are, I can tell stories about ones where that's been the appropriate setup. But also, if we don't want this to take all night, we're going to put an in condition on it, like the, the, that last card. And that's in the core rules. It says, hey, it can end when you get off the ninth card. You can also set a timer on it. Like, hey, five rounds. In five rounds, the moon goes down. And some of these werewolves start turning back, and they're going to scamper before that happens. Cool, cool. I want to use the, the river rather than time, though. Um, so, so, and if I, I wanted this, oh, go ahead. I am not going to assist whatsoever. I'm <laughs> only going to ask questions and pretend like I've never run a chase before. Uh, so, I, why are you going to do me English. like that, Don? Yeah, help. <laughs> I mean, he did here. draw lovely rivers, so he did. That's pretty cool, right? Um, so, and then the other thing that we say in the book is you have to set the starting positions based on the situation. And we can't really go that deep into it in the book because there's literally thousands of situations to cover there. So let's give some hints on how this would look, right? Werewolves are going to be chasing you. They're going to be on the first card. And we do say that in the book, right? So it's like, bam. Did it chase once with face down cards until they got there to represent hidden obstacles. Uh, that's cool. Like, I think that's a fun thing you can do. I like to see them so you can plan a little bit, like as you're running ahead and be like, oh man, like there's something coming up. Like, do I want to go two? Do I want to go one? Blah, blah, blah. So I'm also just for making it easier for people to track marking on the numbers, which spots so that way, if we're talking about, okay, they're going to move from position one to position two. Yeah. Yeah. You've got a number and the card value to key off of. Nice. All right. And so, and the fun thing is when you like, when you have a Joker in a chase like this, it's not a drawn Joker, like for an action card. So nobody's getting bennies or nothing like that. The only thing that it is doing is if you've got a complication, while you're on that card, it's plus two to resolve. So it's pretty easy. Oh, that's a good point, Finkel. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta. Man, that's the, that's the draw, right? Yeah, let's replace that seven of hearts. It doesn't yeah. matter. Don't, oh, come on, leave it, right? Like this is the whole point of the example is like well, sometimes so you won't we, have we clubs. Well, yeah, but we should, we should talk about it, right? Oh, we'll That'll talk about it. Excuse. <laughs> but here's the fun thing is, doesn't matter that there's no clubs on the track. When you draw clubs as an action card is when a complication these cards are just telling you what happens when you hit those complications so like it's it's all good either way like the werewolves can get a complication on that joker it's just easy like this is their apparently it's their camp right it's easy ground and some one of you two while well, out in this field looking for for um whoever was missing stumbled into these werewolves. I'm going to ask here to be that poor, unfortunate soul who stumbled into this, you know, terrifying nest of, of creatures 
and is probably going to die. Chris or oh, Don? totally me. That is. That, I, okay. I, I run into doors that I've just opened. Like. Yeah. So, and we're going to give you an extra Benny for taking the hit, right? Like, I, I would be, do that. Like, I'm going to screw you. I'm going to give you a Benny for it. Uh, and for your starting position, it might be on top of the werewolves. It might be a little bit away from them. I'm going to have you make a notice roll and just, you know, roll a D6 at home or whatever. Uh, and if you make it, you're going to start on the second card. If you fail, I'm going to start you on the Joker with the werewolves themselves. Lucky guy. Oh, I don't think a two does it. You want to spend that ill-gotten Benny you just got? And no, you're wild cards, right? You know, not you're wild yet. cards. Not don't yet. Don't your wild guy. I think I think it, it makes narrative sense for me to be right on top of them. Oh boy! This, so let's do it. It's gonna be a short chase, right? So okay. <laughs> so put yourself on the Joker with them, and Don, your poor, guy, your guys on the the third card. You were a little All bit right. away, right? So the way I'm setting that situation up is there is a role that helps people with their cards. People that were a little farther away are going on that third card. People closer to the action, we're gonna be one card away. If you're right in it, you're on that card too, and you can use die rolls to start splitting that from side to side. It could push all the way to the fourth card, fifth card, however you want to do it, GMs, whatever feels right. Like if the situation was, Don's like, I am playing a sniper who is looking at this from 500 yards away. I'll be like, okay, go ahead and put yourself on the fifth card. You know, that feels right for the situation. Um, but oh my God. Chris, you are going to die, right? So, <laughs> like, this is, you're, you know, apparently you had an appointment because you got to go. Um, <laughs> basic rules for the chase, right? And this is where it can look complicated in the book because we have to cover all these different types and all these situations. Here are the only things that matter for a foot chase. You're going to be rolling athletics. I'll just assume you guys have D6s in athletics, right? If you crit fail on this roll, we're going to roll 50-50. You either lose your turn or gain a fatigue, one or the other. Every character, because you're on your on your own, like if you were in a vehicle, the vehicle would get one card. We don't care about any of that. You're on your own, so each of you is going to get a card. So, yeah, yeah, a little late. Oh, Why good. nine cards instead of five? So nine is the suggested base. And the reason we suggest it is that gives you three cards to set people up on. And then assuming that your characters can run two around maximum, that means that your chase is going to last at least three rounds that way. If it was a five card setup, basically one good roll and Don has escaped and Chris can meet his fate alone and we want to we want to make this dramatic. We want to spread this out a little bit, but it's absolutely a thing. Like you can be like, oh man, the river's pretty close. You got, but you know, all situational. Um, so everybody gets deck is you, Yeah, you get a card. Chris gets a card. Werewolves get a card. If the werewolves get a card, oh come on, Joker. All right, so the werewolves have the six of hearts. I don't know that the, I shuffle the deck very well. Chris has the three of hearts, and I have the five of hearts. Nice. Well, you know, deck under deck. So, and this is like, again, as a GM choice, you might not reveal these. I like to reveal them so that Chris is making an informed decision of whether he would like to spend a Benny to draw a new card and maybe try and get out of there before these werewolves tear them apart. You're muted, Chris. I would spend the Benny. Yes, yes, <laughs> I am going to spend the Benny because um, I don't want to go last. So. Yeah. Oh, there you card. go. Oh, there it's much go. better. Nice. Is that a club? I can't quite see. That is a jack of clubs. Oh, <laughs> even better, right? So... You're going first, but you've got a complication, which means immediately you're going to have to make that athletics roll. Oh, let's see. Now, this is where people can get lost, right? The card that you are standing on 
determines the penalty or not for that roll. You're on the Joker. You're plus two to your athletics. That was the genius behind me not getting off that card at the beginning. Totally, totally. <laughs> totally planned. And, oh, and oh, the, oh, oh, oh. Okay, so six, a two, and a two is ten. All right, perfect. So you yeah, you got it with a raise. And essentially, that means you do not stumble on your face, lose your turn, you know, et cetera, right? And you don't trip over the bodies of the yeah, game yeah, right. on the field uh, with you. Right, right. And you know, like the, the card that you're on like lets you know what happens if you fail that roll. And essentially it's on a red card, you're gonna get bumped, you'll lose a card. On a black card, club or spade, you're gonna have the same effect as a crit fail. Either lose your turn or take fatigue in this case. You made it, so you're good. Right. And if you'd gotten bumped, we'd have added a negative one card, essentially, where you're cut off by the werewolves. And now you got to go back through them to try and get out. Here's the other thing. Gang up bonus, withdrawing an innocent by bystander rules. It depends on the chase. In a foot chase like this, I would say, yes, they do apply. But situationally, Werewolves aren't on top of you yet, so I am just making the call. No one is in contact with you. Oh, good, good. Yet. But there will be a <laughs> few other things, base rules to cover. Range increment's going to be five per card. If uh -oh. Oh, he's still frozen for me now. Wasn't a brief I, freeze. Yeah, we'll we'll give we'll give Daryl a minute to uh, catch up with his internet. What? Well, oh, there we go. Oh, he's there back. He is. I don't know what's going on. Sorry. So there's a couple of maneuvers, but only a few of them apply. We're going to ignore you, the rest. You left it range increment of five. Okay. Uh, range increment of five. If Don wants to shoot, just to try and shake one and help you out, but. Eh. Like that's gonna happen. <laughs> I'm a, shoot me a in the shaman. knee. It's guaranteed. <laughs> yeah, right. So, and then everyone has got maneuvers, right? And there, there's a list of them in the book. Only a few of them apply. We're gonna ignore everything else. This is the way to simplify chases. You guys ignore everything that doesn't apply to this chase, and you'll learn over time which ones matter and which ones don't. Asterisk. In this, that's yeah. just true of Savage Worlds. Period. I, like, yeah, that stuff you don't want to use right now, use everything else. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that's something that you gain over time. It's like, oh, yeah, 90% of this doesn't apply to this situation. Forget about it. So the one, one that applies is change position, which is going to be roll athletics. If you make it, you're going to move a card. If you make it with a raise, you're going to move two. One is going to be evade where you can either use a free action or an action to try to be harder to hit, which might matter if werewolves are trying to rip your face off. Everything else, I would ignore at this point. There's a flea maneuver that could apply. Don't even look at it till you're four cards away from them. By that time, you're probably in the river. Forget about it. The other one is the force, where you can bump them back. There's five of them. You've got better options. So kind of forget about it. So, um, other thing you need to know, werewolves are pace eight. That means they're going to get plus one on their roll to chase you. So given that. Yeah, now, th this is where I, I jump in with my que my questions. Yeah, yeah. Those maneuvers, are they yeah. like actions where I can take multiple in a single turn? So, the they are limited actions. So, and in fact... The, so evade is either a limited free action or a limited action, which means if you want for free, you can be like, I'm minus two to be hit. I'd be minus two to attack or whatever, but it's going to give me a little bit of serpentine, you know, duck and weave while you're running from these werewolves. Change position is also either a limited free action. You can just try for free to run away because you can move for free in Savage Worlds or an action which will give you a plus two on that roll. 
And remember, you can only do a limited action once, meaning all limited actions. So you got to choose one to be free if you and the other to be in action if you want to try and do both. Yeah, Hopefully so that I, makes sense. I think it'd be worth doing it as an action, doing change position as an action to get the plus two. So I'm at a plus four because they get a bonus two if I'm in the same place as they are when they get to go, and that will not be pretty. So, so yeah, well, the plus two, you, the plus, yes, yes. Yeah. Yep. So to doing a vade just sounds like I'm just tempting too much fate. Um, <laughs> you sure you don't want to sacrifice yourself so I can get away? I mean, if you want to shoot me in the knee and make sure that you don't, you don't have to outrun the bear, you should outrun the one guy you're with. <laughs> I mean, yeah. okay, let's see. Uh, okay, so plus two, that's a seven. Seven's going to get you one card. Oh, so close to an eight. So close. <laughs> okay. All right. So you're going to move there. What's the... Um, and that's pretty much it, right? That's your action. Yeah, yeah. Uh, would who's that's next? That's gonna be to the werewolves then. Werewolves are next. All right. So their athletics D eight plus one because they're fast. They are gonna use their. They're not gonna use an action. They're gonna use their free action to do change position. So they've got their action to rend you with nasty claws. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll the D8 for that and a wild die because there's a group of them. So rather than rolling five D8, I roll the, the D6 for the group. You know, So they are not wild card werewolves, you're lucky. But Well, All right. that brings up a question that Venkel asked earlier. If you have a pack of extras and wild cards chasing you, you still group them up, right? You, you This is a GM call thing. Right. Like if you've got a bunch of different things with different stats, I would actually recommend putting them in different groups. So the same role will matter for them. But also if you've got a lot of stuff, yeah, just group it up. Right. Like in a, in a lot of ways, you're like, mm -meh. you know, the, the, let the situation dictate what's easy on you. Um, so and the only time that we specify is if it's vehicles. You say if it's if you got a bunch of people on a vehicle, the vehicle gets one card, and everyone within the vehicle can act in whatever order that they want. In something like this, where you're all separated, it's by group, and generally people, your players are their own group each. And bad guys, it's whatever makes appropriate. Like I might split one of the five off, and he's just like, I don't know, Harold's just doing his own thing, and I would give him a separate card. Ah. I'm not going to, but I could. It is. It's one of the things that makes it fat, puts the fast and fast furious fun, right? So I got in total a seven, which means they're going to move one card. Uh oh. So, and here they come. Oh. And I'm, I'm going to, again, make a GM call thing. There's just like two of them are Anya and they're clawing. So. I'm just going to roll a D8 for each, and they're going to get their gang up bonus because they're both there. And that also means when you're running away, they're going to get to slash at you. So next turn, you might consider using that evade option because werewolves. <laughs> All right. And I hit you twice. <laughs> so I'm just kind of simulating damage. Let's say you're shaking, just so you know. And they're right on top of you. So that's the werewolves. Here they come, here they come. And, right? I know. Oh, it's going to be ugly. Uh, <laughs> and now it's Don's turn. All right. So I think I'm going to, because I've got a little bit of a lead, I'll use the maneuver as a limited free action. So I can try that and still have a action on my turn. There you go. So, and I got a four on my D6. So I'm going to move one. You got, you're taking your wild die, right, too? Yes. Okay, good, good. Yes. Uh, and then I think because it looks like Landauer is, is going to have a little bit of trouble... I might, you know, try and test one of the werewolves that's currently on him, right? Because I know he's going to have to try and get away, and they're going to swipe at him. Absolutely. So 
testing, if you're unfamiliar with in Savage Worlds, is I would choose one of my skills. I would pitch how I am going to hinder this foe to the GM. And if it all sounds copacetic, then I'm going to roll. And then they're going to contest that with the linked attribute to that skill. So in this instance, uh, I believe this is the token for the medicine woman. So let's say that I'm using my uh, uh, faith to, I think I think they use faith, to uh, throw up symbols and signs and try and use the elements that I know that the werewolves are not going to like. Perfect. Let's just pretend that's a D. Oh, I got D eight over here. Let's pretend it's a D. And I like that on Chris's screen is exactly what's happening to his character. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, if it'll stay on the table. So that's a seven for me, and I'm I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, and you should be. However, I just I just aced so wah wah. I uh, love it. So no help. I'm just I'm just doing the my my. Uh, hand signs and yeah. things, and they just—they're uh, too blood. Uh, it is. Blood they they yeah. howl with laughter, literally. Like, yeah, we're not that kind of werewolf, man. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right, deal us new cards. New round. All right. So the werewolves get a four of spades. Chris gets a six of clubs. <laughs> <laughs> Just piling it on. Oh, and I've got a king of hearts. All right. So king is up first. I Unless will know. Oh, the... Landauer oh. could always spend one of those juicy bennies for a uh, a new card. No, I'll take a complication. The complication. No, I'll take a complication. <laughs> All right. Someone asked what the counter was. So faith is based on spirit. So they just made a spirit roll, and I happened to ace it. So normally that would work just fine, but some days you get lucky, and we're cruel here and are looking <laughs> forward to the murderation. So, and I would say that another cool thing, like this is especially great when there's a group of five like this, you could do almost the same thing that you did, but rather than doing it as a test, do it as a support role for when Chris goes, you know, to give yep. him that extra oomph to maybe get out of the, the situation. But it's your turn. What do you want to do? Well, I think I'm going to I'm going to take the GM advice and I'm going to as a limited free action do my maneuver to try and get a little bit further away since I got I got some space. Yeah. And that's a 5 on this die. So I'll advance one. Uh-oh. <laughs> you... And you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure those are all in the back. And then I am going to, I think, because they're werewolves and, you know, they're, they, they can tear through the terrain, but maybe there's like some tall grass or whatever, and I just start slashing at it with my uh, survival knife to try and clear the path to try and support Chris with my survival to give him an easier time when it comes to run away. And, and I know exactly what it is, is you're yelling, watch out for the gopher holes, because <laughs> yes. he's got a complication and that was like in my, my side pocket. I was thinking, well, this is kind of an open field. What would I do for a complication? And I'm like, oh man, go for holes, right? Like you get a leg in that and you could be pretty wrecked. So that is a four, which I am happy with. So that will give Chris a bonus. Plus one. Next roll. So, all right. Now we talked about the card that you're on is what determines, oh, actually are the werewolves before Chris? No, they're not. Oh, thank God. Yeah, so the card that you're on determines like the actual effect of the complication, right? With the black cards being crit fail, the red cards being bump, which would send him back to camp, essentially, scurrying back there. Um, and then whether it's essentially the uh, higher, higher suit or lower suit determines whether there's, a, whether there's a penalty or not. So hearts and spades, no penalty. Diamonds and clubs, minus two to the roll. This is a, what are you on, a heart? I yeah, can't four see of hearts. It. Four of hearts. Hearts, no penalty. So you just got to make an athletics roll, plus one, thanks to support. So do I need to unshake first thing? You said I was shaking, so. So these are both effects that happen before your real turn. So you can do it in either order. doesn't matter. I can do So... Uh, we'll, we'll do the second thing. Oh, and then uh, Bankland actually asked a good question last round. So I misspoke. So the 
he said it was a plus two to the action and no so um i had a two on the wild yeah. wild die that i didn't add and it was a the, the regular roll was a six and it was a one so it was a seven yeah. so that was why i, I said yeah. five plus two but no i did not get a plus two in the, the last time because of the joker it was not on my action right. card it was the yeah. yeah the the joker plus two applies to rolling for for checking for complications yeah. okay uh, four is good enough to unshake so we're good there all right you're go ahead also throw a, a question i see crypt right asking do we already cover this when sharing a card with the enemy there are generally not free attacks when moving away so it says the rules as written are the withdrawing from melee is a rule that may apply it's situational. And I'm saying in this situation, two of them are up in his grill. He will have to take those attacks when he moves away. Okay. Landing okay. on a club. No, so, and this is something people like get confused by, and this is great, right? Having a club for your action card is what triggers a complication. Landing on a club just says, if I get a complication, I believe what Daryl is attempting to say as his internet. If uh, I get a club while I'm on a club? Oh, no. Oh, you're, you're back. Go ahead, Don. Go ahead. Uh, I, what were you, now, I'm, now I've lost the thread. <laughs> no, uh, if, it was if saying, you have a club on a club. Yeah. Essentially, it's the, it's the club as an action card is what triggers a complication. Moving on to a club just means if you get a complication from your action card, you're rolling at minus two because that's what a club does. And it's treated like a crit fail if you fail it. That's what clubs or spades do. So imagine it as the the club on your action card is the thing that generates an event. And the card you are on is the data we look up on a table to figure out what event is happening. Yeah. It, or it's the what flavor of event, right? Yeah. We give you the mechanics, not the narrative, because this could be, you know, running over uh, pontoons in Venice, or it could be running through this field away from right. wolves in the middle of the uh, infernal southwest. Exactly. And even that, we say, is all optional. Like, if you're like, I can't remember that, like, I've just got to do a chase here, then forget it. Then the suit doesn't matter. Club, you know, triggers it and always do it as the crit fail and move on like and there are some chases that out of the box will look like that space chases for example you don't get bumped in so literally the red card it's like it doesn't mean anything no don't even roll nice okay so what was i rolling so we, we did we unshook so we're there and what, what was now it? you got to roll your athletics to oh. not you know, fall into that gopher hole and the plus one thanks to oh Dom. oh the plus one doesn't do anything um <laughs> this this brings up a good question clint had to ask before uh how do you handle a theoretical player that rolls a lot of critical failures <laughs> <laughs> well okay <laughs> well uh, all right so <laughs> first off <laughs> You failed the roll. Yeah. Critical fail of the roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll get to the. We'll we'll add some. We'll 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 add some some pain with the critical <laughs> failure. But just for just for failing it, it's treated like you got a crit fail on a regular athletics roll trying to move on. So medicine woman's like, hey, watch out for gopher holes, and as if summoning one, the boom, <laughs> like your know, leg in. All right. Now, on a fail, we roll 50-50. And we'll say, hey, man, low, it'll be the lose your turn. High, it'll be fatigue. Okay, I've got a, a holler coin. Is that really cool? <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, yeah, just flip it. Yep. So, like, I'll say holler conviction is success and a tree is failure. Let's just say, I'm just, I, I don't trust these well, dice right now. It's fatigue or lose turn. Oh, okay. So, uh, conviction is fatigue and, and tree will be lose turn. Oh, it's conviction. So, fatigue, right? Yeah. Fatigue. Well, on the bright side, so you're you're so, and we'll say like that's bumps and bruises. You're sprain, you sprain an ankle there, and I'm going to say to add insult to injury because it's a crit fail. We got to make something up, but because we define it as a gopher hole, I'm going to say you're entangled. Oh, okay. Ooh. So <laughs> just like stuck in there, and you got some werewolves on you. On the bright side, you got an action, so you might want to use your action 
to try and break uh, free and then free limited action to try and slink slink away. Okay, these dice <laughs> better redeem themselves or I'm on the hook for more dice. And, and, and while Landauer um, rolls, one of the things to keep in mind is the, the idea of being able to say, oh, this is my action or this is my free action, right? Or limited in both of these cases is so that every turn you can be making progress on the running part correct right you always have the opportunity to run even if you're like oh i have to do this action well as a free action i can now keep running so the chase is always progressing yep okay so we're going to do the big evade so i'm a, a minus uh, minus one from fatigue and then do i get minuses for entangled or they just get bonuses to hit uh it's vulnerable if you're entangled. vulnerable okay so 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 you i right, like but let's clarify you said you want to use an action to evade. Yeah. You're going to have to use an action to try and get yourself out. So you're going to be minus two to try and get out because of the multi-action. So minus three total. Okay. All right. Good luck. Well, the dice were kind. The dice were kind. Okay, so I get a six. Seven minus three is a four. That's just what I needed. That's just what you So you managed to wrench your busted leg out of this gopher hole. And now you got to make the free... Roll on athletics. Okay. No bonuses. But a minus You're one from fatigue still. Minus one from yep. fatigue to try and get a card. Oh, and we're still minus two from multi action, right? Uh, no, because no. it's a free action. Oh, it's a free. free. Okay, cool. So it's just one action. Okay, four. Five on the dice, minus one is four. There you go. So you get to move away, and I'm going to have two werewolves trying to get you. <laughs> oh, yep. I think I just prolonged the suffering for a round. <laughs> that's that's your job. You got to prolong it to the river. They but, both they both miss because you evade. Oh, nice. Okay. You're not, uh, and you're not vulnerable anymore because you managed to untangle you got, yourself. Because you unentangled yourself, right? So yeah, you wrench that leg out, and you're like like limping as hard as you can towards this thing, and. Man, medicine woman, I would cut and run if I were you. <laughs> so we're at werewolves, right? Yeah. Yes. So uh, I'm going to split them into two groups. One's going to be a group of three. One's going to be a group of two. Those two are going to keep after the wounded prey, and the three are going to use their action and run after Dawn. So here's the, the runners going after Dawn. They're using their action to change position. That's plus two. They're faster than you guys, plus three in Toto. They get one card of distance. Boo. Well, All right. you know, I it wouldn't it wouldn't be fair, right, to say that you don't got your GM Bennies. <laughs> oh, look at I, that. I do have my GM Bennies, <laughs> but I'm gonna let that lie because I want to keep them for stuff like killing Chris. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other two, they're making their run. They're only using the free action because they're like, this is going to be easy. Plus one's going to need to get that poor wounded rabbit. They get two cards, actually. Oh. So I'm just going to have a move up and attack Chris rather than take the second card. All right. And then both miss because you're evading. That's them. New round. All right. That is a eight of clubs for the werewolves. Finally, Ooh. some bad luck for them. That is a two of hearts. <laughs> and a four of hearts for me. Uh, Anybody want a Benny that? Uh, I got Bennies, yes. I will spend a Benny. Trying to yeah. you'll, you'll miss that Benny when it's time to come soak. What happens but, if the pace of a PC goes below half? So... The general rule is you only get a bonus if you are faster than everyone else on the opposing side. Likewise, you only take a penalty. Like, you don't take a penalty. They only get the bonus if everyone's slow and vice versa. All right, but that 10 of hearts launches you into the first position for initiative. Okay, so I'm taking a minus one still because I'm fatigued, right? So what's my best chance if I want to I want to put some cards between me and them? So what I would do if I were you, use your free action to evade for the minus two because they're going to be swiping at you. Use your action to take the plus two to try and get some distance. Okay, so to total minus one on athletics. Uh, plus two, minus one. 
Oh, no. I got a four on the dice, which means a three. So I fail. I'm, at least I'm not on a club. Well, you, no, you but got you're, bennies. That and you were net plus one, right? Because you used your action. Oh, you plus two. Oh, net plus one. So that's a five. I'm sorry. Yeah. I can't do math on a Wednesday. So okay. you get a whole <laughs> card. Look at you go. It doesn't yeah. help when the players are fatigued just like their characters. <laughs> sure. It's been a long campaign, everyone. This yeah. has been the most Mondayest Wednesday in the history of Wednesdays. <laughs> Come on now. Okay. So. <laughs> Describe this for you. Yeah, it's right. Yeah, it's gonna happen too. Um, see, wounds you can't heal. They go away much faster. All right. Was, speaking of, I was looking. You happy with that? And the happy with are gonna that. Come. Yeah. All right. I'm just regrouping them back into five, and they're all gonna go for Chris. We want some blood. Here. Everyone came here for blood. They make it easily. Move them in there, and yeah. I'm just going to roll. That's going to be three hits with raises. Oh, oh geez. Oh, so I'll just take two bennies if you want to. I'll take all your bennies if you want to still be alive. <laughs> we'll, we'll simplify this part for the, you know, everyone knows how to take damage in this game. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good trade. I'll make that trade. Yeah, yeah. You'll make that trade. But yeah, they're just... Yes, Crypt right is right. Many free, free actions, especially like if they're reactive or whatever, but if it says limited, that means you get one and not just one of that type, one of any limited thing. Limited free action. Yeah, limited free yeah. action. Because you can have a, so you can take one limited action and one limited free action because those are two different categories. Just like how a free action is completely different than a action, same thing if it's limited. Limited just modifies the the category that already exists right all right and that brings us to you don um is that a club oh no, i forgot the werewolves it, had to roll theirs on a club sorry oh yes they did oh they make it easily <laughs> <laughs> uh that's one i would gm benny if they didn't but i am not gonna completely abandon my ally, and I just pulled up, <laughs> I pulled up the archetype cards, and the medicine woman does have relief, so oh, I'm gonna wow. go ahead and as my action cast relief to try and get that fatigue to no longer be a penalty oh, for Chris. What's the range my... on relief? Oh man, I wasn't gonna look that up. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's touch. Uh, Let's is it? I look. The judge, the <laughs> Let's take a look. Oh, it's range smarts. And okay, range well, and her smarts is, is a D6. So, you're so good. just you're good. in range. Just in range. All right, and I do, I'm not actually going to use whatever her skill was because I used a D8 earlier for Faith, so I'll just use that again. <laughs> is that a crit fail? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. That, uh, yeah, I'm holding up the full, I'm holding up the wrong face again. It's, that's I'd, I'd, I'd say you guys are killing me, but no, you're <laughs> no, killing, killing yourselves. Right? Uh, All right, so that's going to be a point of fatigue for me. Yep. <laughs> oh, and guess who's in the audience? Yeah, and any powers, <laughs> any powers would now their duration would end. So if you had boosted your guys, your yourselves with anything, that would be over now. Yep. All right, <laughs> here we come for you know you try and help. Oop. That's a ace, so that's a total of eight. So down to seven on my athletics roll. So I get to move. You would have gotten two cards, except yep. that stinking spell. That's what you yeah. get. For. So this, I, this kind of does raise the question: What happens when a when a harrowed becomes a wear? Are there wear harrows? <laughs> <laughs> that'll be a, that'll be a, a different stream, right? We, we are we are crossing streams here. This is... You you've got to be that kind of harrowed that pickles himself by drinking, because otherwise the world's <laughs> been like, ah, oh, this guy tastes terrible. What's wrong with him? But they're like, ooh, pickles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's, it's looking rough, you guys. So new new cards, new round. All right. So we get a oof, a queen of diamonds for the oh, werewolves. Yes. Ooh, an ace of spades for Chris. Oh, oh wow. And a five of diamonds for me. And right. you know what? 
because I got the bennies and I feel like it's got to come up sooner or later. <laughs> Let's fish for that Joker. No Joker for me, but I do get to go before them with the Queen of Hearts. Nice. There you nice. Go. So no complications this round. No, no, no gopher holes. Other things I was thinking about were like ravines that you might have to cross, you know, or rattlesnakes, things like that. We'll talk about some of the ways we could mix this up in a minute. You know? Um, so a little, 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 Oh, Who's Geo Marshall says there was a Herod werewolf in the werewolf crossover dime novels. Perfect. So I guess we got our answer. Apparently, he was he was really good at dead dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Chris, you're up first. Go. Okay, so I think we're gonna do the same thing as last time. Try the, the free action, the the evade, and then the. Yep. Then the Sounds thing. good. So still to minus one. Let's do this. Um, I, I, oh, I, I gave you all my bennies, so um, mm -hmm. I wanted a two means failure. Nice. So no progress on the bright side. But I'll say, wow, you're just not even getting far enough to trigger all those free attacks. That <laughs> you know what? I, I've 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 tried, but at this. Point, <laughs> You know, sometimes you can't, you can't help people. Sometimes they got to help themselves. So I'm just going to ask my action to get that plus run. two. Yep. Right. And, and the next round is that scene from Last of the Mohicans where he pulls out his, his gun. I will find you to stay alive. Shoots his compatriot in the heart. Oh, oh another God. The gophers are killing you guys, right? Oh, so <laughs> we'll say same thing. So your fatigue level goes up by one. And you're entangled, clonk, you know. Uh, oh, and actually, that's a regular. Oh, and roll even odd. And so now you don't just take fatigue. Roll the the. I even. Even is the fatigue. Yep, even's fatigue. Odd is the. So yeah, fatigued, and I'm adding on entangled because that's that is what this field is all about, and you are. Screw. Uh, okay. Uh, so I'm going to have three of them try and finish off Chris, and two will split off to try and come after you. The three going after Chris have got gang up bonus. <laughs> uh, one hit. Uh, that's going to do a couple. That's going to do two wounds to you. So. You're not dead, but it's looking grim with no bennies. Minus two. three. Ugh. And then the others, the other two move one card towards Dawn. All right. Oh, yeah. I do not like the uh, – I don't like the look of this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Maybe one last round, and then we'll do a little debrief, and we'll start looking at ways to customize this. This this is where I don't remember. So I made these custom – I just grabbed the, our Deadlands font. And made custom token icons for me, and I don't remember which one I was using for wounds, so we'll just use the red dot. Uh, then I'm right. pretty sure there are evil groundhogs in uh, Headstone Hill. So, <laughs> something to look forward to, everyone. All right. So you said one more round of cards. Yeah, we'll do one more because it'll yeah, the other writing will pretty much be like, oh, that's oh. good. Oh. Okay, I listen. I gotta do it, right? I gotta. Yeah. The, the Joker's got to be in here somewhere. There we go. Oh. <laughs> oh. It pays off, oh. and now Chris has got a Joker, which he's gonna need because he's shaking. Oh no, I don't have a Joker. Donald's getting away with the Joker. <laughs> well, right, but you needed the Benny. Like uh, that at oh, least gives true. you a chance. Oh, yes, that's here. true. Yes, yes. All right, Joker's up. All right. Well, I will take my action to try and break free out of the entangle yep oh and i aced there you go so that's nine minus two is well it canceled out so yep. that is nine so that is with a raise so i'm no longer you, entangled you are free and then i am going to run like hell with my plus two yes oh Oh. Double aceage. Nice. <laughs> All right. So for six and one is seven. Six and three is nine. So eleven. So that's gonna get Still me. Still get you one card. Two cards. Yeah. Two cards. Because I got. And cards. even if you'd gotten more than 
a bunch of raises, it still pops yeah. out at two cards. But you can so, only yeah. run so fast. Yeah, rivers in sight, right? Uh, and then Chris is up next. Yes. The um, it, 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 can I can I spend my Benny to have a narrative um, stick of dynamite that I yes on me? <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> The, uh, so I will, I will pull out my cigar lighter and, and put the dynamite in my mouth and light it. And I pretend to smoke At least it. you take out those damn gophers. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Carl's are fine, but damn these gophers. Oh, the Caddyshack. So the uh, oh, lovely. Like we won't even roll that. Like it's this big explosion. Great thing about werewolves is the worst that can happen to them is they're shaken. So on their round, first I'll roll to unshake. They do as a group roll. Next, they've got a club, and what are they on? Oh, shake. Did you shake? Good boy. Good shake. They're on hearts. So, I mean, need to make their roll, which they do. Otherwise, they'd have pushed back a card. The dynamite would have blown them back, right? They move one card towards Dawn. We'll cut it there like you're dead. Dawn's in pretty good shape to get away. You know, he's, he's got Benny's. That is a, ch- a foot chase, like, in a nutshell. Here's a couple of things that we could have done differently because the, what makes chases complicated is there are so many sliders that you can play with, right? Like instead of like, oh, I'm defining this as a gopher field for this one, it could have been rattlesnakes. And a fail on a complication, we could have said were bites. You know, and, you know, we would roll damage and do things like that. We could have added effects like, oh, um, maybe the there was a twister or something. And on a diamond on your action card, you've got to roll or be distracted. Or, you know, if it's a club, you take 2d6 damage from flying debris. Like you can add triggers on all of these different action bets on all of the cards that you run past, if you want to. It can really complicate things, but it can also bring things to life. We could have had this through box canyons and I would have said, hey, ranged attacks are an extra minus two, stealing that from the city chase, you know, in the book. Uh, and also all complications are an extra minus two from that and so on. So there's a, tons of like little triggers and things and you just roll with it for the situation, if that makes sense. Um, we've been blabbing for a while. Maybe let's roll through some of the questions that came up. I think we've hit most of them as they've been coming up. Yeah, there was a good one that I think I mean, we might actually want to like segue into the next time we do one of these. Um, so Tipsy Flipper had a good one to talk about doing ship to ship chases. Yeah, that's so. And what we really want to do is essentially it's going to be like a little PDF that's like a oh, chase. Here's how we're setting it up. Here's an example like we just did. We would go through like turn by turn by turn. Here are some options to mess that mix things up, right? And then ship chase, car chase, spaceship chase. Because once you zoom in on just those specific options, it gets really easy, not as much to track. Only when you're looking at like, oh, every kind of chase at once, does it get kind of overwhelming, if that makes sense. Yeah, and Clint had some good ideas on that. So yeah, we will, we will be doing a whole series of these videos where we'll be talking about, you know, whether it's chases or, or creative combat or interludes or um, mass battle, anything like that. So the, um, we will- Oh, mass battles are so much fun, yeah. So yeah, Ship to Ship will be on that list, Tipsy. So we will we will take your consideration in on that one and talk about- Because yeah. so many of us love 50 Fathoms and that's where 50 Fathoms lives is that Ship to Ship chases and combats. Yeah. Yeah. Airplane dog fights, all of it. Yeah. Yeah. And if you if you could throw a Power Steve's comment real quick that um because Tracy was helping out in the chat explaining uh limited free actions and actions. Yeah. And I gotta so, pa- shout out Tracy's hung- Oh no, there we uh, go. Uh-oh. Home cluster shirt. Well <laughs> it vanishes, so <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh they were talking in the chat, so one could change position as a free action and shoot as an action, right? That's no problem. The shooting is you're just taking an action, whereas the change position would be a limited free action if you're doing it as a free action. But you couldn't change position as a limited free action and evade as a limited free action, right? If one of them right. just said free action and the other said limited, then you could do both. But because Correct. they both say limited, they conflict with one another. Yeah, they're this, they're coming out of the same pool, essentially, and you can only pick one. Yeah. 
but you could say it use the action to move and multi-action to shoot and evade. And then you're like minus four to the shot because, you know, the minus two stacks and then you'd have the multi-action, but yeah, yeah there's a lot. Actions <laughs> limited is actually, I think the perhaps the easiest way to think about it is imagine you've got three slots for your three actions that you could take. And one of them has the symbol that says limited. And so of all your limited, you can, to take that one slot up with your limited and then the other two can just be whatever regular action you would do yeah yeah and then free actions it's even easier it's you got one there's slot only and one then slot as yeah. many slots as you want <laughs> <laughs> or realistically as many slots as the gm will get away with let you yeah with. right and that's why it's conditional right it's like well draw like drawing a weapon is a free action so you can draw two not just one or whatever it's not limited you know Reloading is a limited free action. So if you want to reload your gun, you can't do the evade or the free movement in this. Any other, like, and hopefully this is useful to people, right? Like, and if it's not, tell us and we'll change our, our tack. But like the hope is like, let's dive in and help people get more out of the Savage Worlds they've already got. Yes. Oh, Christian Serrano showing up. Yeah, hey. the, last <laughs> the um, but yeah, that was a. Oh, and then Cryptrite uh, putting in. Uh, apparently, Twitch does not like like uh, websites. So I assume that he was sharing the link to our 20th anniversary Kickstarter celebration. So before we leave, we will actually get to show that um, because let me see. We'll share screen. Let's see. Present. There's something I could I could promise that would put us under the gun but i'm not going to promise it <laughs> oh like have you learned nothing <laughs> yeah but that should pique people's interest without actually putting us on the hook for anything <laughs> if i couldn't possibly be more vague yeah my interest is peaked <laughs> <laughs> something sometime will occur uh -huh. yes and something's gonna happen and, and that time may be tomorrow who knows <laughs> that's true the, oh and, and 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 i will give a hint that it is not a sandwich I'll, <laughs> yes uh someone else commented brilliantly that would not survive around <laughs> i said that yes, 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 yes not around here I'd, I'd have eaten that sandwich yeah. already but the, you know, here it is so that is our 20th anniversary celebration kickstarter um we are funded we are at 111,000. thank you guys uh, the, you. the great number is that we are over 1100 backers um which is amazing but there is three weeks to go on the campaign. So if you haven't seen it yet, we're celebrating the 20 years of Savage Worlds with the uh, fifth uh, printing of Suede. So I'll be um, all updated Suede in hardcover. And then the cool new thing are $20 players books, which are um, Suede is 240 some pages. Uh, let me see how many pages Suede is. I have a copy right here. Suede itself is 200 and eight pages and um the players books are 160 pages of that they're a, a limited section that's kind of um player facing information and, including uh, the chases but not how to build them and structure them but at least how yeah. to roll the maneuvers things like that like as a player so you can look up and go can i evade can i like do i have options beyond what the gm is telling me that's what it's for Right, so all the good play information and you know and, and competitively priced there are they come in soft cover there's five variant covers um so you can choose which cover you get um if you get the pdf you get all the covers in the pdf so you don't have to worry um you can get it for just 15 dollars for the player book digital um but the the real value happens when you grab one of the players books you get your choice of cover there's the variant cover a um which is the really cool supers cover the variant cover b which is like the samurai lotus Blossom just killed a bunch of dudes cover. Um, Red likes uh, katanas, if you didn't notice. She uh, definitely likes her katanas, yeah. Right. <laughs> C, which I think C might be leading in the votes right now, but C is just red on the awesome future motorcycle. And um, D, my favorite, um, not leading in the voting, but um, you, you go for it, you get it. We're not we're not taking them away. You can have whatever one you want. Um, it's the awesome Oni in the background um, with red. And then there's the current mystery cover, um, which will be revealed during the course of the campaign. Uh, and that one's actually doing really well. 55 people so far have picked the, um, the mystery cover. And which, then, which, 
Yeah, which made us like, should we just have that conversation? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what people are telling us they want? <laughs> I like big white question marks. Yes, yes. The um, but so they're really cool things. So if you guys have noticed, maybe Shane will kill me, but I got to zoom down. Um, the stretch goal section. We'll get there. We'll talk a little slowly. Um, there's also in a new accessories box, which is fantastic. So if you missed out on yes. the um, essentials box, this this accessories box is super affordable during the campaign. It is only, I think, $25 as an add-on. Um, yes. It will not be that at retail. Um, the player's books will be 20 at retail. So they, you know, um, if, you, if you just want one of the player's books and you, you, you save up some money, you can wait to retail. But that accessories box has got a whole bunch of stuff in it. And the really cool thing is the first stretch goals we opened – are a new player's box, which are, is going to be one of those cool little magnetic boxes. If you did the Helm High Plains campaign, it's a magnetic closure. And we filled it up with a bunch of really cool stuff to go in that box. Yeah. Um, and, a bunch of the stretch goals. And the accessories box is designed to be, this is the thing you need basically one per table. Like you might get juice out of a second one. Like some of us do like to, especially if we've got larger tables and groups. But you know, player's box is stuff for one person accessories box is some stuff for one table is how yep. we tried to split it out all right and um we should be able to depending on what, what pledge manager software we end up using you'll be able to get extra copies of the boxes um in the pledge manager um the one that you get for all the physical levels the player's box that is unlocked it comes with a stand now it comes with edge cards it comes with sleeve protectors um so a lot of there. I, I i'll make the the note over 150 edge cards it's a lot. Right. Like it's so many, they won't even fit inside the box. <laughs> they will not. But that's the, the the point of the players' box is you're. It's not storage for all of these edge cards. There's it's storage for the edge cards that this one player is. It's this using. one player is yeah. using correct. the the yeah. generics. I, I hate to say generic, but it it's it's the suede box, yeah. right? It's it's not tied to any one specific the core. Yeah, core core box that. $10 box. It's the magnetic flat box that people love. It's got the ribbon. And that is your kind of, if you want to have a really nice box to store all your cards in, it's great for all of the extra cards that we're unlocking in the stretch goals, as well as if, you know, you've got a either an older setting that we haven't gotten to... Oh. That's probably the plumber calling to fix a water leak in my house. Oh, Sorry yeah. about that. Um, Tr but if Tracy, got... I literally just bought one for Mile. <laughs> they had, they had an extra <laughs> one. I'm like, yeah. Mm, I, I if you want for settings that we have not yet done a campaign where we included the card box, you can grab that as well as for older settings. And it also holds dice and bennies and things like that super well as well. Uh, right. Um, a Shane calendar is a good guess for what the mystery 125,000 um, sandwich silhouette looks like. Um, <laughs> We, we haven't decided if Shane is keeping a shirt on or not for that. I mean, he did just get back to the holiday, so he's probably well tanned. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of surprised people haven't guessed it yet. That's interesting. I think yeah, well, I mean, we'd be right? impressed. So yeah, I, I, do, I do believe, so yeah, if the, the, the um, folks mentioned the voting. So if you are a backer, click on updates. The most recent update is vote for stretch goals. And you can uh, also click I think on that uh, image and it will take you to that update uh, for oh, the yeah. actual. Oh, nope. I, uh, it takes you straight to the vote. Awesome. So yeah, there is a link in the update or click on the image that says vote and it'll take you to a really cool. I've already responded. I voted. Um, <laughs> so let's see. Let's see where the voting currently stands. The voting is fantasy companion. It looks like it'll be the first one unlocked if things are going still this way. Um, Supers pack is got a strong second horror pack. Looks like it's coming in third. And then Deadlands, Lost Colony, Holler, and Legends of Ghost Mountain are wrapping up the, the, the final three. So if you guys... Um, Give a yeah, sentence some love, everybody. Come on. Right? There have already <laughs> been 464 responses, which is amazing. Nice. That's a really good turnout for... It's like almost half the people who were backers have already voted. Um, but see, these the voting will end when we get to 125,000. And um, the uh, then we will unlock these as you'll, different... You'll see the fruits of your labors. Yeah. Yes. Right. And keep in mind, right, if, if you haven't uh, read the text of the stretch goals, you're like, oh, where's Deadlands on that list? When Already we hit 100,000, yeah. that was the, the set that unlocked. Because we didn't want to just have you vote and then later get stuff. No, you, you got the full Deadlands edge card set with 100,000. Which is a big set. Right. And Steve, yeah, we, we, we would love to go back to Deadwood. If you're Steve T, we might even, you know, um, that's right in your neck of the woods. So. Uh, you're going back to Deadwood is on um, 
it's, it's in the milieu of uh, Savage Expeditions. Uh, we also have a, a kind of some fun stuff we're planning, so maybe some stuff in Arizona, a little Superstition Mountain fun. So we will see how those... Um... Don't go to the Superstition Mountain. Everyone dies who goes there. <laughs> like for, like, not ghost die, but like... Dies like die. Real. It is like, let's go during monsoon and look for gold. Okay, well, they were never seen again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't is the Dutchman? Isn't the Lost Dutchman? It is. Yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah. Ask Jess about that. Like, that's her pseudo obsession you know, <gasps> is, is that whole thing. That's and she will tell you just how dangerous it is. My favorite, there's like a, a thing like on the web with a, a local trail guide or whatever. And they're there at night and he's just like, yeah, we need to go back now because I'm a little bit uncomfortable because, like, this is how people disappear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right then. Do you, do you want to come get undead with us in Arizona? Come join us. We'll go. Uh, well, I mean, if Mon Susan season's off and, like, half the year's off because it's just way too hot, like, there's a very small window that we're looking at. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's exactly it. He's like, look, look, everyone, we've got snakes. We've got poison. We've got heat. People have heart attacks and die because of the heat. Don't mess around. I mean, this sounds like a real Indiana Jones adventure. So, uh, so folks, uh, we've got, got a little more time. So we'll be back tomorrow with Savage Universe. We'll be on at 7 p.m. Eastern with Battle Lords of the 23rd Century. They got some cool announcements and stuff that's coming up. And then on Friday, we are joined by Tracy Sizemore and um, also at 7 p.m. Eastern for Office Hours. So you'll get to know more about Tracy. So. Uh, those are our streams for this week. So turn in tomorrow and then again on Friday. Ask her about her Han cluster. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah, we'll definitely we'll, we'll definitely get some some Han cluster um, sneak peek art up there and all that kind of stuff. The um, yes, videos are on the um, YouTube. You have to click on live, however. So you, yes. go, you go to Peg Inc. Uh, go to YouTube, search for Pitiful Entertainment, and then there's a little tiny top that says live. It'll show you all of the ones that have been, been uploaded live. And, and, and it'll take a little while, but we will have a PDF that covers exactly these scenarios and you know whatever. So we'll have written transcripts too soon. So absolutely. So yes, yeah, so we will definitely do more getting creative. I think Mike Barbeau will want to get on, talk some stuff with the uh, we've got some good ideas on what you guys are eager to see. So we'll do some space chases and some yeah. Uh, age of and, sale and all that good stuff. and tell us right like hey this is something i'm messing with or like i bounced off of and we'll we'll try to hit it and go a little deeper or ask those questions of why is it nine cars what should i do five should i do 11 what's the effect you know if, if they don't escape at a certain card what happens they all die because you know and and invariably we'll do one about uh dramatic uh tasks and we'll have to discuss my addiction to dramatic tasks. Oh yeah, no, they're they're the, the best, right? Yeah. So or social we, conflicts. Also, uh, right, right. And we have Tracy on for that too. So, the um, yeah. So you'll be seeing more of us this week. And then if you have interested in the Kickstarter, do check out the Kickstarter. It keeps us uh, all fed. And the, the great thing about this Kickstarter is because the Suede book and the Players book are already complete. Um, we're not going to have that several week delay with player feedback and, and play testing, the open play test that we normally do. And um, yes, Tracy is officially cool. Um, so <laughs> this is the, hopefully this will be a um, a quick turnaround Kickstarter for folks, and we will get swayed. So I mean, not that we're proud of it, but we're kind of proud of it. But it's also a little bit embarrassing. This is the second time you guys have put Swayed out of print this year. Yeah, um, that's the, yeah, that's awesome. That's right, awesome, and a little like how did this zero bad twice? feeling about that. Like. <laughs> It's a little hard on me trying to go to retailers and be like, yeah. great promotion with Savage Worlds. You can get, oh, we can't get the core book anymore. Sorry. That sounds like a you problem. Though, right? <laughs> <laughs> so like, yes. <laughs> right. The, um, so the good, the good news is though, is if, if you do have any open campaigns that are like Fantasy Companion or um, Marvel Oblivion, which is going to be shipping immediately after Fantasy Companion, which is, um, we heard from the warehouse, Fantasy Companion, some orders for Fantasy Companion have gone out today. Um, those will be continuing throughout the week and probably for several weeks because there were like 5,000 of you or 8,000, some all, a high number of thousands of you who wanted to get on the Fantasy Companion um, between the campaign and the pre-orders. So those are going out now. Um, so give us a little time if you don't get a, 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 um, a shipping notification, the tracking number, um, because those come those come up depending on when when the company gets the info and all that good stuff. But those are going out the door, which is great. Uh, but if you did order a copy of Suede and we are out of them, we can either offer you a refund or you can wait and get a copy of the fifth printing, um, hopefully in less than a year. Hopefully it'll be you know uh, several months less than a year. But they, that's the cool thing about the, the new Kickstarter is um, 
it should be a, it should be a fast one, all things considered. So we appreciate your support. It's great to see over almost 1,200 folks back in the, the Kickstarter already, and there's three weeks to go. But um, we'll see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern for Battle Lords of the 23rd Century, and then Friday for Tracy Side One. Cheers, folks, and we will do more of these getting creatives because uh, it was fun to do, and we know that you guys want to see kind of the examples. So there will be more of these as well in the future. So cheers, folks. Get out there and play some Savage Worlds.